Legendary Passages, Episode 77, Third Argonauts. Introduction to the Argonauts, from the Library of Apollodorus. Previously, Eno conspired to sacrifice her stepson Phrixus, but he escaped on the back of a flying golden ram. Another version of that tale is told here, as well as the backgrounds and genealogies of many Argonauts, including Jason. Aeolus had sons Sisyphus and Athamas, who was father of Phrixus and husband of Nephel, Eno, and Themisto, and they all came to bad ends. Salmonius impersonated Zeus and got thunderbolted, but his daughter Tyro married King Cretheus of Iolcus and had sons Amatheon, Pheres, and Aeson, father of Jason. Tyro had also by Poseidon sons Neleus and Peleus. Peleus became king after Cretheus, and made an enemy of Hera by killing his own stepmother on the altar of the goddess. This will come back to haunt him later, as we shall see. Introduction to the Argonauts A legendary passage from Pseudo Apollodorus Bibliotheca, or The Library Book 1, Section 9 Translated by J. G. Fraser of the sons of Aeolus, Athamas ruled over Boeotia, and begat a son Phrixus, and a daughter Heli by Nephel. And he married a second wife, Eno, by whom he had Lurchus and Melicertes. But Eno plotted against the children of Nephel, and persuaded the women to parch the wheat. And having got the wheat, they did so without the knowledge of the men. But the earth, being sown with parched wheat, did not yield its annual crops. So Athamas sent to Delphi to inquire how he might be delivered from the dearth. Now Eno persuaded the messengers to say it was foretold that the fertility would cease if Phrixus were sacrificed to Zeus. When Athamas heard that, he was forced by the inhabitants of the land to bring Phrixus to the altar. But Nephel caught him and her daughter up and gave them a ram with a golden fleece which she had received from Hermes, and borne through the sky by the ram, they crossed land and sea. But when they were over the sea which lies betwixt Sagium and the Chersonese, Heli slipped into the deep and was drowned, and the sea was called Hellespont after her. But Phrixus came to the Colchians, whose king was Aetes, son of the sun and Perses, and brother of Circe and Pasiphae whom Minos married. He received Phrixus and gave him one of his daughters, Calliope. And Phrixus sacrificed the ram with the golden fleece to Zeus, the god of escape, and the fleece he gave to Aetes, who nailed it to an oak in a grove of Ares. And Phrixus had children by Calliope, to wit, Argus, Melis, Prontus, and Cytosaurus. But afterwards, Athamas was bereft also of the children of Eno through the wrath of Hera, for he went mad and shot Lurchus with an arrow, and Eno cast herself and Melisertes into the sea. Being banished from Boeotia, Athamas inquired of the god where he should dwell, and on receiving an oracle that he should dwell in whatever place he should be entertained by wild beasts, he traversed a great extent of country till he fell in with wolves that were devouring pieces of sheep. But when they saw him, they abandoned their prey and fled. So Athamas settled in that country, and named it Athamantia after himself. And he married Themisto, daughter of Hypsius, and begat Lucan, Eurythreus, Sconius, and Ptoas. And Sisyphus, son of Aeolus, founded a Phyra, which is now called Corinth, and married Merope, daughter of Atlas. They had a son Glaucus, who had by Eurymede a son Belopharon, who slew the fire-breathing Chimera. But Sisyphus is punished in Hades by rolling a stone with his hands and head in the effort to heave it over the top, but push it as he will, it rebounds backward. 
This punishment he endures for the sake of Aegina, daughter of Asopus. For when Zeus had secretly carried her off, Sisyphus is said to have betrayed the secret to Asopus, who was looking for her. The Ion reigned over Phocus and married Diomede, daughter of Xanthus, and there were born to him a daughter, Asterodia, and sons, Anetus, Actor, Phylacus, and Cephalus, who married Procris, daughter of Erechtheus. But afterwards Don fell in love with him and carried him off. Periares took possession of Messene and married Gorgophon, daughter of Perseus, by whom he had sons, to wit, Apharius and Lucipus, and Tyndareus, and also Icarius. But many say that Periares was not the son of Aeolus, but of Cenortus, son of Amyclus. So we shall narrate the history of the descendants of Periares in dealing with the family of Atlas. Magnes married a naiad nymph, and sons were born to him, Polydectes and Dictus. These colonized Seraphis. Salmonius at first dwelt in Thessaly, but afterwards he came to Elis and there founded a city. And being arrogant and wishful to put himself on equality with Zeus, he was punished for his impiety, for he said that he was himself Zeus, and he took away the sacrifices of the god and ordered them to be offered to himself. And by dragging hides with bronze kettles at his chariot, he said that he thundered, and by flinging lighted torches at the sky, he said that he lightened. But Zeus struck him with a thunderbolt and wiped out the city he had founded with all its inhabitants. Now Tyro, daughter of Salmonius and Alcidice, was brought up by Cretheus, brother of Salmonius, and conceived a passion for the river Anipius, and often would she hie to its running waters and utter her plaint to them. But Poseidon, in the likeness of Eponius, lay with her, and she secretly gave birth to twin sons whom she exposed. As the babes lay forlorn, a mare, belonging to some passing horse-keepers, kicked with its hoof one of the two infants and left a livid mark on its face. The horse-keeper took up both the children and reared them, and the one with the livid Pelion mark he called Peleus, and the other Neleus. When they were grown up, they discovered their mother and killed their stepmother Sidero. For knowing that their mother was ill-used by her, they attacked her. But before they could catch her, she had taken refuge in the precinct of Hera. However, Peleus cut her down on the very altars, and ever after he continued to treat Hera with contumely. But afterwards the brothers fell out, and Neleus, being banished, came to Messene, and founded Pylus, and married Chloris, daughter of Amphion, by whom he had a daughter, Pero, and sons to it, Taurus, Asterus, Pileon, Diamachus, Eurybius, Epilaus, Phrasius, Eurymenes, Evagoras, Alastor, Nestor, and Periclymenus, whom Poseidon granted the power of changing his shape. When Hercules was ravaging Pylus, in the fight Periclymenus turned himself into a lion, a snake, and a bee, but was slain by Hercules with the other sons of Neleus. Nestor alone was saved because he was brought up among the Ganarians. He married Anaxabia, daughter of Cratius, and begat daughters, Pisidice and Polycast, and sons, Perseus, Stratacus, Aretas, Echephron, Pisistratus, Antilochus, and Thrasymedes. But Peleus dwelt in Thessaly and married Anaxabia, daughter of Bias. But according to some, his wife was Philomache, daughter of Amphion, and he begat a son, Acastus, and daughters, Pisidice, Pelopia, Hippothoe, and Alcestis. Cretheus founded Iolcus and married Tyro, daughter of Salmonius, by whom he had sons Aeson, Amatheon, and Pheres. Amatheon dwelt in Pylus and married Idomene, daughter of Pheres, and there were born to him two sons, Bias and Melampus. The latter lived in the country, and before his house there was an oak, in which there was a lair of snakes. His servants killed the snakes, but Melampus gathered wood and burnt the reptiles, and reared the young ones. And when the young were full-grown, 
They stood beside him at each of his shoulders as he slept, and they purged his ears with their tongues. He started up in a great fright, but understood the voices of the birds flying overhead, and from what he learned from them, he foretold to men what should come to pass. He acquired besides the art of taking the auspices, and having fallen in with Apollo at the Alephius, he was ever after an excellent soothsayer. Bias wedded Pero, daughter of Neleus. But as there were many suitors for his daughter's hand, Neleus said that he would give her to him who should bring him the kine of Phylacus. These were in Phylacae, and they were guarded by a dog which neither man nor beast could come near. Unable to steal these kine, Bias invited his brother to help him. Melampus promised to do so, and foretold that he should be detected in the act of stealing them, and that he should get the kine after being kept in bondage for a year. After making this promise, he repaired to Phylacy, and, just as he foretold, he was detected in the theft and kept a prisoner in a cell. When the year was nearly up, he heard the worms in the hidden part of the roof, one of them asking how much of the beam had already been gnawed through, and others answering that very little of it was left. At once he bade them transfer him to another cell, and not long after that had been done, the cell fell in. Bylicus marveled, and perceiving that he was an excellent soothsayer, he released him and invited him to say how his son Iphiclus might get children. Melampus promised to tell him, provided he got the kind and having sacrificed two bulls and cut them in pieces, he summoned the birds, and when a vulture came, he learned from it that once, when Phylacus was gelding rams, he laid down the knife, still bloody, besides Iphiclus, and that when the child was frightened and ran away, he stuck the knife on the sacred oak, and the bark encompassed the knife and hid it. He said, therefore, that if the knife were found, and he scraped off the rust, and he gave it to Iphiclus to drink for ten days, he would beget a son. Having learned these things from the vulture, Melampus found the knife, scraped the rust, and gave it to Iphiclus for ten days to drink, and a son, Padarses, was born to him. But he drove the kind to Pylus, having received the daughter of Neleus, he gave her to his brother. For a time he continued to dwell in Messene, but when Dionysus drove the women of Argos mad, he healed them on condition of receiving part of the kingdom and settled down there with Bias. Bias and Pero had a son, Teleus, who married Lysimache, daughter of Abbas, son of Melampus, and had by her Adrastus, Parthepineus, Pronax, Mechistius, Aristomachus, and Eriphyli, whom Amphorius married. Parthepineus had a son, Promachus, who marched with the Epigoni against Thebes, and Mecistius had a son, Eurylaus, who went to Troy. Pronax had a son Lycurgus, and Adrastus had by Amphithea, daughter of Pronax, three daughters, Argia, Depile, and Aegialia, and two sons, Aegialius and Cyanippus. Pheres, son of Cretheus, founded Phary in Thessaly, and begat Admetus and Lycurgus. Lycurgus took up his abode at Nemea, and having married Eurydice, or some say, Amphithea, he begat Apheltes, afterwards called Archimorus. When Admetus reigned over Phary, Apollo served him as his thrall, while Admetus wooed Alcestis, daughter of Peleus. Now Peleus had promised to give his daughter to him who should yoke a lion and a bear to a car, and Apollo yoked and gave them to Admetus, who brought them to Peleus, and so obtained Alcestis. But in offering a sacrifice at his marriage, he forgot to sacrifice to Artemis. Therefore, when he opened the marriage chamber, he found it full of coiled snakes. Apollo bade him appease the goddess and obtain as a favor of the fates that, when Admetus should be about to die, he might be released from death if someone should choose voluntarily to die for him. And when the day of his death came, neither his father nor his mother would die for him, but Alcestis died in his stead. But the maiden sent her up again, or, as some say, Hercules fought with Hades and brought her up to him. Aeson, son of Cretheus, had a son Jason by Polymede, daughter of Attilicus. This passage continues with Jason receiving his quest and quickly sailing to Colchis, 
but our next episode will detail the assembling of the Argonauts. <laughs>